So when the 13900K CPU was announced, I knew I wanted to upgrade my main workstation, which had been an AMD 5950X based system. I say had because a couple months ago it stopped working and I'd been too busy to drain the custom loop and figure out what's wrong with it. Anyway, after looking over a few boards to pair with the 13900K and after convincing myself painfully that I don't need a thousand dollar Z790 overclocking board for work purposes, I chose to build with Gigabyte's Z790 Aero G board. And since I physically have it now, I thought it would be a great time to go over a few things before I build it into my new workstation. So if you've been looking around for a cutting edge feature packed board at what I believe to be a super fair price, especially when comparing this board to similar boards and their features and prices, then let me show you the Z790 Aero G. So this video is going to serve as an overview of the board instead of like a dedicated review because I haven't even used this board yet. But let's take a look at this creator focused motherboard from Gigabyte. And if you guys didn't already know, the Aero G branding basically denotes that when they designed this board, they had a creative or a work focused audience in mind. But what that also means to the average gamer or enthusiast is probably at least a few cool features added on that you might not necessarily see on other boards. All right. And I actually wanted to touch base on their marketing material on their website here before we dive into the actual board itself. Keep in mind as we go through the price that it's selling for, which currently on newegg.com, so US price is $300. Now it does show that this is back ordered out of stock. However, ETA is in two days from time of recording, so uh, availability shouldn't be too, too bad. So let's sift through the good and the interesting features as well as some marketing BS right from their website here. So when you navigate to this board on their site, this is the first thing you see. It talks about Aero series being motherboards that are a fresh approach to creators that evolve with optimized features for content creation. And we'll get into that a little bit more later, but that's all we see here. So scrolling down right away, they hit us with Vision Link. So what the heck is Vision Link? Basically, it's a USB Type-C port that supports display output. 4K 60 Hertz. You can also do up to 60 watt charging on this port for a drawing tablet is the example they give here or a pen display. And they show you how you could replace the traditional connectivity of using all those complicated wires and adapter box with their single type C cable for their vision link. Because it supplies 60 watts of power, you could also just use this port for charging like a phone, um, a lower powered laptop or anything else like that. So yeah, basically vision link is a USB type C port USB 3.2 Gen 2 with display and charging capabilities. So moving along to connectivity next, we have an Intel 2.5 gigabit LAN port. 2.5 gigabit LAN is pretty common these days and is kind of the new unofficial standard for ethernet connectivity speeds on a mid-range, upper mid-range type board. Wi-Fi 6E onboard, pretty standard stuff now for mid-range and up boards. The E at the end of Wi-Fi 6 stands for extended, which pushes the Wi-Fi signal up to six gigahertz frequency versus the standard 2.4 and 5 gigahertz I'm sure a lot of you guys are familiar with. One of the main advantages of Wi-Fi 6E versus Wi-Fi 6 is about twice as much bandwidth and also faster speeds. Just basically the latest and greatest connectivity. It also doesn't mention here, but this same module also has Bluetooth 5.3 on it. And then also down here, it mentions super speed USB 20 gigabit per second. I guess this is another port in addition to Vision Link, but it's not made super clear here, so I'm sure we'll figure that out later. So next up, talking about DDR5 and this is indeed a DDR5 board and they're marketing some of the differences between DDR4 and DDR5 but guys did you know this will give you faster instant reaction speed guys faster than instant who <laughs> who wouldn't want that jokes aside up to 128 gigabytes of RAM that's actually the capacity I have planned for this board which I will be installing immediately as soon as I'm done filming this video that way I can finally get through the backlog of videos I've filmed but not edited PCIe 5.0 the fastest, most robustest, no, it doesn't actually say that, the fastest, most robust level, PCIe Easy Latch. I know this has been a thing for a while, but I have yet to own a system for myself that has this. It's basically where they make the release latch much more accessible and easy to use once you put a giant GPU in the X16 slot. Over time, with bigger heat sinks on the VRM and M.2 slots and these wildly massive GPUs, it's become, in some circumstances, very difficult to release a GPU once it's slotted and locked into that slot. This implementation is just an extension of the release clip itself, whereas other vendors have been taking a much more innovative approach like this random one I chose from Asus. Either way, as long as I can get my GPU out when I need to, I'm happy. They also have a better system here for securing M.2 drives, so we can all stop fiddling around with that little screw like the cavemen we are. This is one thing that really caught my eye. Look at all this heat synced M.2 storage area. You could do some pretty cool RAID 1 setups if you store mission critical information locally on your machine while you're working on it throughout the day. That way, if you did have a drive failure, you'd be covered. 
You could also do redundant boot drives or something like that. I don't know what to say. I like storage. It excites me, but <laughs> kind of makes sense that I'm looking at a board like this. Up next, we get into a little bit about their heat sinks here. So just some massive heat sinks all over the board, all passively cooled, great for low noise environments and for not being annoying and distracting like some of those boards that have small 40 millimeter high RPM fans. They also really put some thought on aesthetics for these heat sinks, giving them that like creator type vibe. Anyway, I got no complaints. I love how this thing looks and it's super on brand with the whole Aero G creator thing. And then finally, we're on to the key features. So is there anything here we haven't already talked about? Ah, some fan features we haven't talked about yet. We'll get to those. And Q Flash Plus. Q Flash Plus allows you to flash your BIOS on an empty board, no RAM or CPU required. So you guys have seen a little bit of the board from the marketing material here, but let's get you guys set up in a better view and we'll go over what's mounted where on the board as well as touch on a few of the features that we haven't quite got to yet. So let's first start by talking about this absolutely massive heatsink that covers the entire board since that's the first thing my eye is drawn to. First, we have the VRM heatsinks, which I'm sure are completely overkill. I did reach out to Gigabyte to try to find out more information on how many amps the power stages are rated for or to learn anything about the topology of the power and signaling layout. Unfortunately, I did not hear back in time for this video. If, and that is a big if, I do hear back from them, I'll pin a comment below or something. Moving down to the center section here, even though this heatsink kind of looks like one big block, it is, it is divided up. There is actually no connection between the VRM and the M.2 heatsink here. And there's uh, not very much connection at all between this upper M.2 section and this lower section. Judging by the size of this middle heatsink here, I'm guessing they're expecting Gen 5 PCIe drives to run hot. One thing you will have to consider if you do decide to populate this Gen 5 M.2 slot underneath this giant heatsink here is that you will be forcing the PCIe X16 slot here to run in X8 mode. That's so it can free up four extra lanes for the M.2 slot. You guys will have to decide for yourself what that means in your case. And if you guys ever wanted to know where I get this information, you can check the user's manual for a block diagram. This shows the user how everything's electrically connected. So in this case, you can see we have this one PCIe 5.0 link doing one PCIe X16 with all 16 lanes, or the one PCIe at 8X sharing with one M.2 socket three. And then I believe it shows the name of the header printed on the motherboard in brackets here. But moving out of the manual and back to the board, and I had to switch arms here because this thing's so freaking heavy, it's killing my arm. We have this lower portion of heat sink area here responsible for cooling an additional four M.2 drives, as well as the Z790 chipset, which is located under this square area over here. Note that this top M.2 slot here has direct PCI Express 4.0 connectivity to CPU, whereas the other three slots run through the chipset. There may be some latency difference there. I'm not entirely sure about that. While we have the heat sink off, we can also see the socketable Wi-Fi Bluetooth module right here. Moving down below that, we have two more full length PCIe X16 slots. However, these are electrically wired in a full time PCIe 4.0 by four configuration. These are great for like network cards or HBAs for expanding to external storage pools or something like that. Uh, and I'll try to get a shot of it. But if you actually look inside this X16 slot, you'll see that there's only pins that cover the first, well, if half of it would be X8. About half of that would be X4. So yeah, the pins just cover the first four lanes of the PCIe inside the slot. Over to the edge of the board this way, you'll see we have four SATA 3 ports. It's interesting to see how these ports seem to be a dying breed. One thing that's really nice about this board is all the fan headers. Like there's a billion, okay, not a billion of them, but there is eight to be exact. Starting at the top, we have CPU Opt, CPU Fan, System Fan 6 Pump, System fan five pump, system fan four, three, two, and one across the bottom. I personally love that it has this many fan headers as it means that you can have a lot of different zones of pump and fan control within the reporting software. Interestingly, all these headers are rated for two amps or 24 watts, even the ones that mention pumps. So keep that in mind and don't exceed that rating. There are two temperature sensor ports, EC temp one and EC temp two. I thought this board came with those thermistors originally, but I didn't see them in the packaging. Not a big deal. I think they're readily available. If you did manage to find yourself a pair of thermistors, you could have one set up to capture intake air temperature as it enters into your case and one set up at the exhaust. This would be neat to see how much air is heating up as it moves through your case. The sensor placed at the inlet, as long as it was mounted in a good spot, could also give you ambient air temperature of your room, which as an enthusiast is always nice to know. 
The top and bottom of this board has both three and four pin RGB headers. So no matter what type of RGB connectors your hardware uses or where the wires end up more easily at the top or at the bottom, there should be a place for you to connect your lighting. One of the last standout features on the board I wanted to talk about is this noise sensor port down here. It does come out of the box with a jumper on it. And I think that is important if you're not gonna actually use the mic to leave that jumper on there. So there's a little mic that's included with this board and it can take a decibel reading inside your case at the location of wherever you mount it and report it to you within Gigabyte's fan control software. I assume you could use this to ensure your computer never makes more than a certain amount of noise by controlling fan speeds. This may be useful for anyone that records sounds or something and wants to ensure that their system always stays quiet enough to not be picked up while recording. And I'm actually just gonna set this thing down because it's actually so freaking heavy, it's starting to hurt my arm. So maybe you're just some quiet PC enthusiast. I really would like to know what you guys think of this noise sensor port and what you guys would use it for, or is it just gimmicky? Like I kind of like it, even though I don't think I'm gonna get a lot of use out of it. I'll definitely play with it. Flipping around to the rear IO. First up, we got your good old fashioned basic USB 2.0 ports. Below that, we have the connectors for the Wi-Fi antennas, a stack of four USB 3.2 Gen 1 ports. And then it starts to get a little interesting because we have display port in. And the board does come with a short display port cable. And what that allows you to do is connect your GPU out directly in here, passing through video signal to come out on, ah, this must be our vision link port. Okay, I kind of get how this vision link thing is different than a regular USB-C port now. They mentioned in their online marketing and also in the user's manual about drawing tablets. So maybe this is a really cool feature that I don't use in my line of work. I'd love to hear from somebody that uses a drawing tablet. I've probably done a horrible job explaining what this vision link is or what it does, but it's because I don't fully understand it. I'm likely a little oblivious to how cool of a feature that may or may not be. So beside our DisplayPort in, we have HDMI out, which is when you want video signal directly from the CPU. We have a red USB 3.2 Gen 2 port, and I guess it's red to show that it's different than the Gen 1 ports that are blue up here. Next to that is our infamous Vision Link port we've been talking about, our 2.5 gigabit NIC, uh, another USB 3.2 Gen 2, which is also red. The one beside the NIC is also the one you'd use for QFlash, although there is no indications on the board. It's just you'd have to read the manual to find that out. And then there's another USB type C 20 gig port beside it here. And then you just have your audio ports at the bottom, uh, line out, mic, and optical SPDIF out. So that's all I have for you on this Gigabyte Z790 Aero G board. I hope you learned at least a couple of things from this overview. And if you did, please like and share the video and consider subscribing. We're chasing that 1000 subscriber mark as any new YouTube channel would be. Don't miss your chance to be in that uber early pre 1000 subscriber OG gang. <laughs> anyway, I don't know. That's it for me. Thank you for watching all the way into the end and I'll see you in the next one.